right? Tell, tell you about my journey, my journey to becoming an author. <clears throat> uh, you know, my journey was definitely not sort of the traditional journey. I wasn't a kid who grew up reading. I wasn't a kid who necessarily grew up writing prose. Um, my passion when I was younger was poetry. And the reason why I love poetry is because poetry reminded me of rap lyrics. Rap lyrics was the thing that introduced me to poetry uh, in and of itself. I used to go to the store and I would buy cassette tapes. And then I would come home and I would open up the cassette tape and I would read all the lyrics out of the liner notes. And that was sort of what got me into understanding that you could use language, written language, um, in a way that could tell the stories of people who it seemed as though no one else was thinking about only because the stories of kids who grew up in communities like mine weren't being written in books, uh, at least not in many books, for kids during the 1980s and the early 1990s. Um, and so poetry was my sort of way in. Uh, and then much later on in life, uh, in my mid-20s, which I guess isn't that late in life, but in my mid-20s, um, Christopher Myers, uh, Walter D. Myers' son, was the one who encouraged me to write prose. Um, and Walter's work was the work that gave me, that I felt like gave me the permission to use my natural voice and to say that like there's value that I already possess simply in being who I already was and who I already am. And I think young people um, aren't told that enough. And so if I could figure out how to put my natural voice, my, my, um, my natural tongue on the page, I figured that perhaps it could connect to people who, who felt like me or who speak like me or who look like me or who appreciate the culture that is mine or who live in an urban environment. So all these other sort of subsets of people um, who are searching for, hopefully, who are searching for these kinds of stories. What themes are important to convey in my writing? It's so funny. I don't know if I, you know, I don't think about it sort of in such a concrete way. Um, more so I think about what are the stories that aren't being told and what are the stories that deserve some balance um, and some nuance. And then I, I attack the stories that way. Uh, I think there are a lot of incredible stories that have been told, but I think when you, when you talk about uh, specific groups of people, you tend to get slivers of their lives. You tend to get thin slices of who they are instead of getting into the complications and the complexities of what it means to be a human being uh, in this country and abroad. And so for me, it's most important to just be authentic, just be as honest as possible, to try to write young people uh, with integrity. Um, because I believe that young people can see themselves and can see uh, what's real and what's not um, faster and more clearly than any adult on earth. Um, and the other thing I like to talk about a lot in my books is family. I think family is such a fascinating phenomenon. And I mean, I know it's, it's, you know, it's a one plus one is two situation and not necessarily something that just appears, right? Families aren't magical, quote unquote. They aren't sort of like uh, miracles, right? But to some people, families are miracles. And to some people, uh, and to some kids, families are phenomenons. Families are these interwebbed, strangely interconnected systems that are that are that are weird and that are strained and that are strange and that are sometimes estranged um but all of these sort of um iterations of family i think are, are interesting and are beautiful in their own way um and inform us on who we are as a people and I think we really got to, if you want to understand a person, you want to understand a community, then you look at the families within that community and the dynamics of those families. And that'll give you sort of uh, the necessary palette to paint that community with. Um, so that's, that's a big deal for me. What do I want readers to take away from reading my books? Here's the thing. I'm not interested in teaching any lessons. And I know that's sort of like, you know, I, I just don't necessarily think that you need to pander to young people to get them to read your books. And I don't think it works. I think for me, I just want young people to read my books and feel cared for. That's it. Feel safe. Um, feel like there's someone else in the world who understands or who at least acknowledges your existence. Uh, that's it. I think that's, I think that's a powerful, powerful thing. There's so much power in acknowledgement. I think we overlook that by trying to browbeat and teach lessons. Um, life will teach you lessons. Right. My books are to to arm you with the fortitude to deal with those lessons once life comes along and uh, teaches you them. So, uh, and how do I feel about this amazing donation from Simon and Schuster? You know what? I gotta admit, Simon and Schuster has been extremely supportive. Um, they've been a, they've been you know the company on a whole has just been a friend to me. 
and, and I'm, I'm humbled and I'm overwhelmed and I'm grateful and uh, I hope to continue to work with him and I hope to continue to build this legacy. Um, so thank you, Simon and Schuster. Thank you, First Book. Uh, all the love in the world.